still have coffee, bitch. Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel Zamora and thank you so much for watching. For today's video, we are talking about oily skin beauty tips. I have very oily skin, especially my T-zone and I have acne prone skin. So if I'm not careful, I will break out. But also if I'm too oily, my makeup starts messing up. And after spending so long on your makeup, you want to make sure that it lasts at least until you wash it off. You know, let's not make it last like 48, 72 hours. Like that's disgusting. Wash your face, right? At the end of the day, wash your face at the end of the day. But I have picked up a lot of tips and tricks to make sure that it lasts until the end of the day and making sure that your oils aren't messing up your skin, that you're also not clogging up your pores, that you're also not making yourself susceptible to breakouts or anything like that. So for today's video, I'm just showing you all my beauty tips and tricks for oily skin and making sure that I can help you get this face on your face. Let's just jump into the tips and the tricks. When it comes to prepping the skin, I do have some moisturizer on. I don't have face oil. A lot of people like to use face oil before their makeup or they like to blend it into their foundation. It doesn't work for me. I know how to get that dewy look without having to add the oil. I'm not saying that it's wrong. Does that make sense? So if you are looking for face oils, these are the two that I use. This is the Drunk Elephant Virgin Marula Oil. And then this is the Biosense Squalene Tea Tree Balancing Oil. The tea tree is gonna help with acne prevention. Especially if you're acne prone, I would definitely look into more tea tree products. For me, I'm not gonna use it. I washed my face and I applied a serum. I applied the Lancome Genifique with some Ole Henriksen like banana eye cream. And then I applied just a simple moisturizer. One moisturizer that I always have in my beauty area, this is the It Cosmetics Secret Sauce. I don't use this all the time, even though I should, cause it's clinically advanced miraculous anti-aging moisturizer, whatever. I don't use this all the time. I only like to really use this, especially for makeup applications. It makes your skin very like tacky, if that makes sense. You can definitely apply a lot more of this. If you have dry skin, this is probably gonna be really good for you. It's extremely hydrating. But today we're going full coverage, bitch. Full coverage. I only really put this on my neck because I want to show you primers that I use on my face. So I definitely recommend this face cream, but not all the time. So for primers, there's, to me, two main primers. There is a hydrating primer as well as a mattifying primer. Balancing primers, you know, like the kind of like silicone-y, like the pore filling ones. I don't like those. I don't really think they do anything for oily skin for me. On my, okay, let's, let's just speak about me, okay? I've noticed that pore filling primers just make me break out. They do. They're pore filling and you're already oily skinned and you're applying foundation on top and all this makeup on top. Primers are so thin, they go into your pores. If you're acne prone and you're not cleansing your skin properly or you get blackheads a lot, you're gonna get a lot more blackheads with pore filling primers. I'm just letting you know, it happens to me a lot. I don't with them anymore. If you want to, that's on you. If you break out, that's on you. <laughs> but I've noticed that like whenever I use like a pore filling primer, like I get hella blackheads. Okay, so for primers, where are all my primers? I don't even really use this one. <laughs> That slipped out of my hand. Okay, so for primers, these aren't the only ones. The only one that I do suggest that to me is just like an iconic primer. I've used this from the very beginning. This is the Makeup Forever mattifying primer. This is the small one. This is what the big one looks like. This is the one that like, you know, like in Sephora and like that little checkout aisle, like this is what you get in there, that tiny little one. This is the big size one. I'm really obsessed with it simply because it keeps you matte and it has, what does it say? Like cinnamon root extract. I think that's what it is. But Makeup Forever has a bunch of different primers. I really do like them. This is just an iconic one. I literally found out about mattifying primers because of this one. I like it, especially in my T-zone. I'm only gonna put a little bit because I'm gonna show you my trick with my foundation. So I'm only gonna put a little bit and then I'm putting it right here on the nose. Should I bring you in closer? <laughs> or is this good? I think it's good, right? You just need the tips, but she's in the other tab. Just the tab. I even get a little bit more and it comes out like real weird, like look. Okay. I get really oily in my T-zone. So then I put some around my nostrils because I get really oily there and my makeup breaks up here. And then just on the center of my forehead right here, carrying it into my brows. If you have a very oily T-zone, do your brows get oily? They do, right? Like my eyelids get oily, like all this gets oily. So like whatever excess I have on my fingers, I carry into the brows and onto the lid. I got an email. Hi everyone. Oh my God. Oh my God, look, I got a new mirror. And then for hydrating primers, I have a bit of a combination skin. I'm very oily in the center, but the perimeter of my face is a little combination. Sometimes if I'm not careful, it can get dry. Sometimes it's just normal. So I like to use a hydrating primer 
on the outer parts of my face because I like that dewier effect, that more hydrated effect. And I don't mind that. So the one that I really like, well, two that I really like, these, you just need a hydrating primer, to be quite honest. This one is First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Hyaluronic Hydrating Primer, and it's safe for sensitive skin. This is what it looks like. And then this is the Ofra Coolest Cucumber one. Y'all probably seen me use this a couple times. A lot of people like to use the Milk like Hydro Grip Primer. It's good. I, it's good. I don't reach for it, to be quite honest. But all I do is... I put the hydrating primer just on my fingers and I just keep it on the perimeter and you see how the skin looks so hydrated here like just glowy but the center isn't as glowy like I think with oily skin you want to control the oil you don't want to just think that oh no it's fine like I'll be fine no 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 no, no. if you don't control the oil and you're not aware of the oil then it's gonna fuck up your makeup okay now, when it comes to foundation, I know, I know you're probably annoyed at me at this point because I talk about this foundation all the fucking time. No, 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 no. I get it. 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 The reason why I'm obsessed with this is because I like a mattifying foundation in the center. And the thing about this one, you know how some people like a dewy foundation and they're like, oh my God, this one's so dewy. That's great if you have like money to just spend, but I suggest investing in a mattifying foundation first. And I definitely suggest the Maybelline one. It's easy, it's normal to oily skin. So even if you're not too oily, if you're kind of like normal, but you do get some oils, it's still gonna help you. But the reason why I like it is because it's easy to manipulate without having to add too much stuff to it and the reason why I say that is because I can carry this all over my face and still make the outer parts of my skin dewy while keeping the center matte and the reason why I like that is because if you're gonna be wearing your makeup for a long periodical time I suggest putting a mattifying foundation in the center and that's why I only put a little bit of the primer because I don't want to get too dry in the center because even though you're oily you can get too dry and then your body's like what the f is going on and then it starts to produce too much oil so be aware of that don't get happy with a mattifying primer and add a mattifying foundation on top and what I like to do is I like to just and you don't need anything fancy I think with however you want to apply your foundation trust me you'll be fine I like to just grab random brushes the random brush I'm using today this is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH08 but I just like that it's like a buffy brush and then I just start from my nose and just diffuse it out with a brush especially a buffing brush is because it allows me to really diffuse the product onto the rest of my face however i want to if you like a little bit more coverage in certain areas i feel like a buffing brush is just going to help you a lot more and you can always go over it with like a beauty sponge to really like diffuse it and blend it into the skin look at the skin look at the skin do you see how it's still so hydrating like on the side but on the center it's not well i mean it's a little like hydrating it's a little oily there but it's fine because we're gonna like mattify that out with setting powder but i think let's talk about concealer real quick so there's only really like four concealers that i carry with me at all times because i'm like oh i like love these i know exactly how to manipulate them and only one of them is actually really hydrating that one is going to be the kkw beauty concealers i really like them they're very hydrating but i use them for days where i'm not really wearing a whole lot of makeup that's why i like them because i like how dewy they look but when i have a full coverage day it's not what i reach for what i reach for are these three concealers right here mac pro long wear concealer iconic it's probably to me this is the concealer you should be buying if i'm going to recommend any concealer because it's such full coverage and it's a lightweight and it's not gonna be upset by how dewy you are if i'm doing like that matte dewy look I'm definitely gonna be obsessed with it another concealer that i really like but you definitely have to figure out is the it bye bye under eye it is a very thick so if you're not setting it right, it can actually crease really heavily. If you're new to it, like you just have to really manipulate it. So I get it if you don't want to get this one. I definitely suggest this one. It's cheap and it's good. Okay, it's just the best. The best of the best of the best. But I like to play with other concealers. This one is really good. Okay, this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Full Coverage Concealer. I'm obsessed with it. I still have to really play with the colors. Like it's just so good. The only thing is that it has like a little wand. So if you're not, if you don't like that, that's fine. I think for today, I want to use some MAC Pro Longwear because I haven't used it in a minute. I've been trying just new products out, you know? And with this one, I actually like to blend it out with my finger. I feel like it just really heats up the product, right? And then I like go in right here. Also, the reason why I like this concealer is because it is full coverage. It's light, but it isn't dewy. It's not matte. It's more so on the matte side, but it's not mattifying. Does that make sense? Like, it's just, you can make it matte if you set it or you can keep it very liquidy and concealery if you don't overset it. I hope that made sense. <laughs>
and then bring some gel here around your nostril right here. I'm telling you, your finger will blend it out beautifully. Beautifully. This concealer with your finger is the best. Do you see that? See, like it just blends beautifully with the foundation. They complement each other really, really well. So sometimes you don't even have to buy the most expensive products. You just have to buy products that work for you. Always remember that. Like test out things that work for you, that you understand because girl this foundation cheap not well not cheap but like super inexpensive drugstore like i've tried some of the best of the best and for some reason i keep reaching for that one and also they make really good colors for like my medium skin tone because i'm very like olivey yellow so i like that i'm able to find that type of foundation within drugstore so keep that in mind Okay, everyone, one side note from the Urban Decay one that I forgot to tell you is it dries extremely fast. When you apply, you must blend. When you, when you apply, apply, you must, must blend. blend. When you apply, like every single time you apply it, just start blending. Just start blending. That's the only thing about it. I still really like it, but you have to instantly start blending. Because I was like, oh my God, why is it drying so fast? I was like putting it on everywhere. I totally forgot. So now that my face is looking real pretty, I like to then set my face. So when it comes to setting powder, there's not a whole lot of certain types of setting powders you should be using. I think the Laura Mercier one is just iconic. I think everybody has the Laura Mercier powder at this point. If you don't, I mean, I, I suggest it. So when I start setting my under eye, I have to instantly set because if not, it creases, but also I don't set my entire face, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna show you how I set it. First, I like to blend my under eye. I grab a Morphe E49 brush. It's just my favorite brush set my under eye and my nose. And the reason why I like to set it with powder and then bake is because it really locks everything in. Especially if I get oily, especially right here, this area right here right next to my nose, I have very large pores. So I tend to create a lot more oil. I like to just set it and then I like to bake and it just really seals everything together without your skin going crazy because you've already primed it, it's hydrated, it feels fine. But if it's gonna get oily, it's not gonna get too oily. I hope that made sense, right? So then I set it with that and then I grab my beauty sponge and then I just, whenever I set, right? Because I want this area to still be dewy, I'm setting here, right? Putting it on the side of my nose like this. This will help seal everything together as well on your nose so that your nose doesn't get too oily. And then instead of going like this, I actually make it go like this. Do you see that? Like I turn it to where only that much is touching my face and it's going on the side like that. And it just really helps with leaving this area. I don't overly set my face. So if you like to really set your face, you can do that. I just, I don't do that. So this is just work, what works for me. Remember this video is what works for me. And then set this area right here on the side of the mouth. And the reason why I set this is because I'm oily, first of all, right? So this area is already gonna get really oily. But when you talk, when you do things, your laugh lines start to crease. So if you're oily and you're creasing, this whole area is gonna become a shit show. Like a shit show. I don't know if this happens to you, but before I did all this, like this area, like especially for like full coverage foundation, I would go to an event. I would notice that like this area, like I would see like the makeup just start to remove. Like it would start to get red. I would get redness. And it's like your skin is coming out and you're like, what the f is going on with this area? So it took time for me to figure that out but it's because i wasn't setting it properly so just make sure you're setting it and then just right here always make sure you blend out your forehead the reason why i didn't blend mine out is because i have so much botox that like my forehead's not moving like look 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 <laughs> oh my god i love this look but I told them, I was like, I still want to be able to move my brows. So should I do like a filler video? Like talk about all my filler? I'm down. I'm down. Like, why not? Oh, and then blend out the other side. I like to do my bronzer and brush and blush. My bronzer and blush before I do my brows. And I, like, you know how some people are like, oh, I do brows first. I don't do brows first simply because my brows are very tricky. I'm very oily. I barely have brows. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a struggle bus city. It's struggle bus city. But what I like to do is this is the Morphe brow setting gel. You can use any setting gel to be quite honest. This is just the one I have right next to me. Oh God, it has too much brow gel. That's the only thing I hate about the Morphe one is that it has, it just like gets too much brow gel. You know what? Let me get the benefit one. Where are my brow stuff? Yes. Oh, I forgot how good this one is. Why am I not? I think it's because the component is so big. Like, look at this. It's just easier to carry the Morphe one, but the benefit one actually smells so much better. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. If you're going to get a brow gel, either get the Anastasia one or get the benefit one. It's just, they're just not easy to clean. There's like something in here that makes sure that you don't get too much product, which I really like. 
but nonetheless, nonetheless. So the reason why I like to do this is because I get very oily. My eyebrows get very oily and the majority of my brow is brow product and it's like a pomade. And if you're just not careful with it, like your eyebrows will get oily and they look oily. Like if you're oily, you get what I mean, right? Like your eyebrows get oily. I like to do a brow gel before I do my brows. And to me, it's my, one of my friends who's a makeup artist, who's one of my favorite makeup artists. He told me that trick. He's like, I like to set the brow first with a brow gel because it allows you to manipulate the hair. I know I don't have a lot of hair, but it also allows you to not get too oily. So it creates that almost like a primer, like a base for your brows. So I definitely recommend it. It still makes it very easy to like apply your brow products. It doesn't change it. And you can brush your hairs out. Like if I had brows, I'm gonna get brows, watch. I'm gonna get a transplant. I would only wear brow gel because brow gel is so pretty to me. It's just everything. So oily tip. I'm just letting you know, if you have brow gel, just try it, just try it. I'm letting you know, it's gonna be a game changer because your brows will last all day. Like no oiliness to them. They're not gonna move, they're not gonna change. Okay, so let me do my bronzer and everything. I'll do my brows and then I'll come back to show you setting spray. Cause I feel like this is all you really need for oily things, right? For your eyelids, that's completely up to you. It just depends on how oily you get. I don't do a whole lot of color. I'm gonna do like a little bit right now, but I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, this is what the makeup looks so far. For brows, I use the Anastasia Brow Pomade. I'm really obsessed with it, especially if you're really oily. It's really gonna help. And then I just have lashes on. I literally only put bronzer in my eye and then just a nude lip. And I went a little heavy with the highlight. Not gonna lie. So now let's talk about setting sprays. For setting sprays, I use this one. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter. They sent me a super giant one. And I even have the travel size one. I'm really obsessed with it. I also have like a Fix Plus moment. That's generally if I want to, I guess, wet my face without wetting my face. Does that make sense? Like if I want to set my face or spray it or anything and I want to spray a lot of it, this doesn't make you matte. It doesn't make you dewy. It doesn't make you anything. It just sets your face. It's like a good setting spray, right? For sealing everything, I definitely recommend the Urban Decay All Nighter. There's also the, it, it's a similar one, but it's called D Slick and that one keeps you matte. Um, I generally like this one. I'm not a whole big fan of mattifying setting sprays. There is one that is good. That is the Creme Shop one, the matte primer. That one's really nice. If that's something you like, I personally don't care for mattifying setting sprays because I've already mattified my entire T-zone, okay? For setting sprays that I like, the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray is everything. Everything, everything, everything. And this is what I like to do. I don't like to spray too much, just enough. That's it. That's gonna help blend everything and then just on the neck. If you put makeup, like especially here, you wanna make sure you set it so it doesn't like transfer or anything. That's why I really like the All Nighter one because it definitely keeps you a little matte. It's not a mattifying setting spray, but it definitely does kind of seal everything together in a slightly mattifying way. I definitely recommend this one, highly, highly recommend. I always use it, it's like my go-to. I literally have it right here next to me. But I wanna show you kind of like dewy primers. So you have the mattifying one by Creme Shop. They also have a dewy primer and setting spray, 12 hour makeup elongation. I don't feel like luminous, dewy skin mists kind of set your face, okay? What I like to do with it is I like to then grab the product and spray it on a sponge and place it, okay? So I don't spray this on my face anymore simply because it gets everywhere and you have to cover your face sometimes. Like this has my name on it. Gabriel's Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mask. Okay, so this is what I like to do. Grab any beauty sponge. This is my Juno & Co one. And then I grab the setting spray, the Dewy Tatcha one, and then just two. Two pumps, right? That's it. And then I place it only here. I only really like it on my highlight. Oh, do you see that? Okay. I only like two sprays and then just place it on the highlight. And then areas like right here, look right here. I still place it all over the face simply because the excess, not the whole spray. These areas tend to get a little bit, not tend to get dry, but don't get as oily. So they look just a little bit more dry in comparison to the rest of the face. So I like to add just a little bit of dewiness to it. There, there we, we go. go. Okay, and now let's talk about blotting translucent setting powders. Ooh, look how dirty that is. Okay, so I have three that I really like. One of my most recent ones that I've been liking a lot is the Urban Decay All Nighter type of setting powder. This is a waterproof setting powder. Goddamn waterproof, okay. But like, look at the packaging. It's so pretty. I suggest taking this powder with you. Well, yeah with you. I definitely suggest it. Bring like a little something, a little brush or something. The reason why I like this one is because it's not too translucent. Kind of like, this is not mine. This is not mine. <gasps> Ew. Ew, this is not my powder. Nikita 
Dragon, you're so disgusting. This is not my powder. Ew. Okay, this is my Fenty Beauty powder. I was like, yo, I would never. Because look at mine. Look at mine. And then look at Nikita's dirty ass. Nikita flares! Okay, I really like this powder for blotting. So like, let's say you're going about your day and you're like, I'm getting a little bit oily. I definitely suggest this one. You just can't go too heavy because it, even though it's translucent, it's still gonna go on a, a little bit white on you. So don't be too heavy with it. So if you're more medium skin tone, I highly suggest this one. Um, the Fenty one is really good as well. I just like that this is waterproof. I did not know that. Waterproof setting powder. Okay. And then if I want to be bougie, I have the La Mer one. This one, it's La Mer. It smells so good. I like it. It makes me feel really bougie. Do you need it? Absolutely not. If you want it, I highly suggest it. Like, I'm just letting you know. So I'm going to use my La Mer one and that same setting powder. I just, and I only keep it here. I only touch up. Whenever I use a, like a touch up powder like this, I'm only touching up areas right here in my T-zone because when it's lighter like this, it also highlights. Does that make sense? It's almost like a brightening powder. So definitely keep that in mind. I really like it. And that's how I touch it up. This highlight is so disrespectful. Okay, you guys, and this is the final look. I really like it. I have a hair here. This hoodie, if you're wondering, is a Pepsi hoodie that I got from Forever 21. Isn't it cute? And it comes with like matching shorts. Cute, right? Cute. Okay, if you guys like this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I really like to gauge as to what you guys like on my channel based on the thumbs up. So if you really like it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. So I know that you like this kind of video, that you like more like oily skin videos, or maybe you just want makeup tutorials. Um, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and you hit that notification bell so you can be notified exactly when I upload a brand new video. And oh my god, I just hate the end of the video like all the time like every single time It's the end of the video. I just hate it because it's like until next time. I love you girl until next time everyone. Bye everyone